bushcraft nunchuckers. Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zev from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So, it's been a while, huh? Did you miss me? Go on, you know you did. Right, so I actually came down on a previous occasion to work on this base camp, but upon arrival over the kind of like New Year's Christmas period, we've had a lot of bad weather, torrential uh, rain, we have a lot of strong winds, and there was devastation in this woodland. So I came down driving, I couldn't even drive into the woodland. The driveway, there was dead fall across it. The footpath walking up, there was a death fall across that too. If you follow me on Instagram, I actually done a very short video to kind of give people an update to let them know. So it's just kind of a reminder in general throughout the year, but also at this time of year, also winter, uh, you've got to be careful around the woodland. So you see this tree right in the background there. It's about 100 meters away. It looks closer on the camera, but it's quite far away. That's just kind of one example. Now, don't worry, around the base camp itself, with the help of a lot of friends that came down on previous occasions, we cleared up anything remotely dangerous around the base camp itself. But obviously it's just in the woodland, the footpath, the drive path. Uh, we just have to clear a lot of stuff up. Even today, I came, there's even more today, but I didn't want to spend a second full day clearing all that up. I've got work to do, people. Now, one thing I will say off the bat, it is gale force winds today. It's like 45, 50 mile per hour winds. It wasn't supposed to be that strong today. It's supposed to be quite mild, but all of a sudden it's just picked up halfway through the day and it's gotten crazy. And so I have got that wind protector on my road mic, um, but obviously you're still gonna be able to hear it. The winds are that strong. So I do apologize in advance. So from the last time I came, today what I've done is I spent the morning just clearing up the immediate vicinity of the site itself. I've built a fire reflector, uh, which I'll show you up in close detail. Uh, put a temporary uh, pot hanger in the form of a chain and I've made a pokey wokey wokey stick, right? To kind of move around embers and whatnot. So let me show you what I've been doing. So I've had some sweet chestnut left over from the main build itself and a big thank once again to a buddy of mine, Chris, who sorted all this out for me. So what I did was, I got some of the thicker pieces here, pointed them at the bottom and really hammered them in. So I put them in a good foot, foot and a half into the ground. Then what I did was got some paracord, 
uh, tie the kind of two supports together. Because what happens is this, if you don't tie them together, you start putting the pieces in, um, the start, you know, these pieces just start widening up. Because obviously there's more load going on. So I put this on, put the power cord on to tighten it. Um, and then obviously cut these to length, a decent length that gives us a good coverage. Um, and then started piling these in. So obviously I cut them to size first, then obviously started putting them in. Uh, and then obviously because the, the pieces are pretty straight, chestnut typically goes quite straight. But what you find um, is you're still gonna have kinks and bends, so it's not perfectly straight. So it doesn't satisfy my OCD completely, but it's pretty good. Now obviously I'm gonna give this a little bit of time to settle in and then start filling in the gaps with debris, with mud, leaves, whatever, right? Twigs and so forth. But in general, it's pretty good. So in terms of the pot hanging systems, obviously I'm gonna make one out of wood and do some real fancy stuff. So I kind of experiment my skills around that. But what I've also done is just use a simple chain, um, use a kind of like carabiner and like a hook on the end. So I'm gonna play around with a few different combinations of this. But like I said, I will do a wooden one. It looks a lot nicer. Uh, but also this is just a temporary one for now as well, made out of chain. And last but not least, a fire poker. All I've done was kind of chisel the ends because when you're cooking, uh, fire management is a big thing. So being able to move around embers and kind of control the heat when you're cooking stuff is very important. And all I've done, I just cleaned this uh, top bit up with a knife because obviously that's what you're going to hold. Uh, chamfered off the ends so they don't kind of bite into your hand. Use a bit of brace to drill a hole and put a bit of paracord through it and obviously just hang this up. So it's convenient, it's just right next to the fire um, and then obviously just use it at will. I've invested in a lot of cooking equipment, uh, Dutch ovens and a few bits and pieces. Cooking is a big, big thing that I want to do at this base camp. It's one of my motivations for building this in the first place. So a whole raft of baking, grilling, you name it, I'm going to be doing. And so in order for me to do that effectively, obviously I've got to utilize different cooking uh, uh, applications and appliances and systems and whatnot. One thing I do want to add on as a caveat, I want to show you the things that I bought. I will stress that everything I'm about to show you, I bought with my own money. Uh, I've not been given anything by any company. I've not been being paid to endorse anyone. I've literally paid for everything here. So I just need to make that clear. You see, there's a few people on YouTube when they're watching, they get their knickers in a twist. When you start showing off kits and oh, you've been showed off by a company. So uh, I want to stress that's not the case. However, saying that, if there are some companies that want to chuck me some free cooking gear, hit me up. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is the Dutch oven itself. Now, when you look around, obviously there's a lot of kind of like uh, no branded ones. There's a whole variety when you look online. However, when it comes to kit, I'm always got the philosophy of one thing and that is just buy fewer things but buy much better quality things and when it comes to Dutch oven one of the very best companies that are out there is Petromax German company um, phenomenal company and so what I did was I bought this size I think I bought the one size bigger and it was either one or two size smaller than this as well so it's like a series of four they go much bigger than this so there's a whole I think there's about 10 12 sizes um, so I bought one of these and what I did was, when you buy in uh, the Petromax, the cases and the Dutch ovens themselves uh, come separately. And it was, they're quite expensive. They're roughly double the price, roughly, of your standard unbranded Dutch ovens that are out there. But these are like the Rolls Royce of Dutch ovens. So when buying the Dutch ovens, I spoke to a few friends of mine who were very clued up with this stuff in the UK. And what they all said was, you can get the ones with feet and you can get the ones without the feet. And pretty much every one of those friends that I spoke to who really know their stuff, who are instructors and whatnot, they all said get the ones without the feet. Nothing wrong with the ones with the feet, but they all said it's much better. You have much more versatility uh, with the ones without the feet. So that's what I got. And the one thing I like about this is obviously it's got a hanger. And one thing you learn with a hanger is they're off-centered. So when you're hanging them, they basically don't swing. You know, it's kind of like the, the ergonomics of it, I guess. And also, the lids are extremely substantial. Now remember I mentioned them not having any feet. That is because the Petromax lids, they have these on them. So basically you can stack the Dutch ovens on top. And so obviously that creates space and obviously you're regulating the heat depending on what you're cooking. Certain things will only need a small amount of heat. Um, and so obviously you put those on top. And um, so like I said, these are very substantial. I bought one which is unbranded. Immediately you can feel the difference in weight and all sorts of stuff. So there you go, those are the Petromax ones. Like I said, these are 
quite pricey uh, and the cases alone are very pricey but there's going to be a lot of transporting these around so i thought you know what i spend the money once hopefully hopefully it will last me a very very long time so those are the petrol mounts i bought this size the one size bigger and the two that come smaller than this as well and that gives me a hell of a lot of flexibility when it comes to cooking so another thing I got was a set of frying pans. These are unbranded. I will get the Petrol Max down the line. I didn't want to get them, but I couldn't find them anyway. So these are unbranded. I got a very good deal on these actually, a set of three. This is the one in the middle. There's one smaller and there's one bigger. I didn't bring everything, obviously I don't need to, but this is just to kind of demonstrate. Uh, it's a deep one. So obviously it gives you a lot more versatility in terms of cooking, but yeah, you've got that there as well. Obviously cleaning is a big one. So I've got this Hidden Woodsman pouch. Look at that, branded mate, branded. And so in here as well, obviously it's just got a standard cloth. One thing you learn with Dutch ovens, you don't use uh, paper towels, okay? It leaves lint, so it blocks up the pores. Cleaning is a whole uh, game in itself when it comes to Dutch ovens. Some I'll be going over in future videos. But I kept a pouch, obviously the, the cloth is gonna be quite dirty. So that's in there just to kind of keep that obviously clean. Another big thing, obviously you're gonna be dealing with hot pots and pans. You're gonna be moving kind of like fire around. So when you go to a lot of the bushcraft schools in the UK, you find these, these are welding gloves. You can pick them up for pretty cheap online, like Amazon, eBay, the usual suspects. Um, so I paid just a fraction extra, they were still very cheap. So I bought a pair of welding gloves, um, and these are fantastic, you know, these are really good. It gives you a lot more versatility. Because this is a fixed camp, obviously I can afford to bring a lot more gear. Um, so this is one of those things that's very, very invaluable. So there you go, welding gloves. Now part and parcel of the whole fire management thing are trivets. And there you go. So these ones are ready made. So this is your three horseshoe ones based on a traditional gypsy design, I believe. And this is your single horseshoe one. All right, so once again, it gives you more versatility. So obviously this allows you to raise the Dutch ovens, etc., higher off the ground. And obviously you can do your fire regulation and fire management. Obviously you use a pot hangers as well, but this obviously um, gives you another kind of option to do. I will be forging these myself also, have no fear. Uh, but I bought this ready-made, I actually got a good deal on Etsy. There was a blacksmith I found on there, uh, based in the UK, and he sold me at a really good price on these two. And finally, with the trivets, I had a look at eBay and I found these. These are vintage cast iron trivets. I think the listing said they're French, but I'm not sure. But these are cast iron, these are much more shorter. So once again, apologies about the line, it's about to get dark here. So, so I picked these up really cheap. I think together, including ship postage was about eight pounds or something, which is really good. Trivets actually go for a lot of money when you find them online. So there you go, smaller trivets. And last but not least, if I wanna play Captain Hook in a pantomime, I can use these. <laughs> right, let's be serious. So these are obviously the pot lifters, the lid lifters for the pot. So this is the Petromax one that I've got. And then I found this one here. I forgot who it's made by. And these are the ones actually people recommend because what it's done, it's got a grip. And the reason why these are important is because you can lift the lid up, it holds it. And when you do fire management, you put embers on top of the lid so it bakes from above. And so with this, you're able to lift it up and you can dust basically uh, the ash off, you know, without burning yourself. And obviously they're quite long, so when you're picking it up off the fire, you can dust all the ash off carefully without it going into your food. So if you're baking a bannock, you want to be able to heat from above as well. So you put embers above. And by lifting this up here, moving it across, then clearing off the embers, and obviously you won't get any on your bannock. So I picked up one of these as well. So there you go, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. I was actually going to make a celebratory cup of tea, but it's literally about to get pitch black here within the next 10, 15 minutes. It looks light on the camera, but trust me, it's getting really dark. So I'm pretty gutted. The day's gotten the better of me. Man, I had my fancy cook set and I had a fancy spoon ready as well that I got off a buddy of mine recently. And that's what I'll have to show you next time. So there you go. That was an update on this bushcraft base camp. On our next visit down, I've got a whole load more stuff to do. I hope you guys have been keeping well. I know it's been a while. So I look forward to seeing you real soon. One quick thing I will state, and um, I've said this on previous videos, I do updates on Instagram and Facebook as well. So just search for Z Outdoors. The moment you see an Asian guy with a dodgy looking nose, then obviously you found me. So, look forward to seeing you on there also. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. In 50 mile per hour gale force winds, peace out.